Hey guys, a little progress uh, video here on the first floor. Uh, the floor's got a little dusty in here over the last few weeks with some uh, construction going on, but um, it's pretty much done except for the bathrooms and the flooring on the far side. So it's coming out really good. The uh, bathrooms are going in this corner over here. That's why there's no flooring. And uh, one of our friends donated this Carabella sign. Jay Wilson, the AHMRA uh, two-time champion who sold us the Carabella motocross bikes, donated that. Steve's over here putting some window trim on in the uh, far window bay over here. These are new windows, they're wood windows inside and out. These are ridiculously expensive. They cost about 200 bucks a piece. I mean, excuse me, $1,200 a piece. There's my Honda 250. That's how I get around the mill. But yeah, he's putting some new trim in here. And uh, the guys are working on the uh, lower level. There's five floors on this side. This is an 1880 edition. And uh, it's, uh, this makes the, the building a football field long. It's th over 305 feet long. So um, you can see this side, this addition is a little higher than, than the uh, this side over here, but there's a lower level. This is the first floor, then there's a second, third, and fourth floor. So there's five floors on this side of the building, which is kind of cool. So let's go down to the lower level here. I'll show you what we're working on down here. In here, uh, the um, entire uh, support system for the mill has been, we had an engineer come in and do a, a bunch of engineering here that the uh, town had uh, um, requested and we needed to uh, shore up the building. All these support beams were put in, a new foundation was poured, um, a new lighting system down here, and of course, a whole new sprinkler system. This is a dry sprinkler system. This area isn't heated, but you can see this section of the mill this was formerly the far wall over here and i'm not sure what these are but they're uh um these stone uh pillars so to speak and then these were the window over here the whole mill was made with just rocks and uh giant timbers but um it was a tremendous amount of work was done down here getting the place up to up to code then we come into here and uh Ellison and Ray have been working in here on the masonry work. Um, this this is the, the lowest level of the mill. Um, you can see the, the, the rough, poured, rough poured concrete floor. This was uh, um, the first layer. There's going to be another layer put on top of here. And they're working on the on the masonry work. You can see the, there's some, some real nice stone work uh, here on the mill that was covered with this uh, um, parging, uh, concrete parging, which had failed. So they're going through and repointing this and redoing the uh, surface. So um, it's coming out awesome. It's gonna be beautiful when it's done. They just don't build buildings like this anymore with giant timbers like this, massive timber. This building will be here long after we're gone. Um, show some more of the handiwork. Uh, foundations were made out of stone back then and uh, repointed with con concrete all the windows are brand new these were installed a couple years ago they're uh they just need to be cleaned they're wood on the inside wood on the outside so a lot of tremendous amount of work went into here you can see new lighting new sprinkler system and uh if you come up out of here it'll give you an idea where we are this is this this is the uh um driveway that goes through between building number three which is the main building i was just inside of and uh you can see there's one two three four and then the fifth floor of 17 foot ceilings and there's a bridge you can actually ride a motorcycle across the bridge on the second and third floor right into this building right here which we haven't restored yet but it's got some really cool artwork on there like the evil knievel stuff and uh some cool pictures of churches, local churches. This is the actual very spot I was standing where I made the decision or the, I think, turned the corner and decided this is a project I wanted to take on. I walked out into here in between the two buildings and uh, saw the 11 acre site with the massive smoke tower and uh, these other buildings. I was like, wow, look at the potential back here. It's 150,000 square foot. It's like, it was like a lost uh, city in the jungle.
This is actually my favorite building. It's 50 foot by 50 foot with 30 foot ceilings and it's clear span and it's got windows all the way around it. This would make it a killer uh, restaurant. Put a big giant Cro-Magnon fireplace right on there and do like pig roast and cook 30 chickens at a time. But it just is awesome inside there with the, uh, matter of fact, why don't I take you guys inside and show it to you. This is a, a building that's been abandoned for 60 years that we haven't got to this one yet. We're trying to get our, the funding together to finish this. So if you know anybody who's super wealthy and wants to get in, involved or any big buildings that need, or big companies need tax deductions and want to get involved with the museum, how cool is this? Look at this. 30 foot ceilings, 50 by 50. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it's just an awesome structure. Huge windows all the way around. I wanted to put a circular bar in the middle here with a, up in the corner there, a loft on one quarter of it with a uh, staircase going up to the a rooftop bar on the top and uh, have a pass through bar so people can just walk up and order drinks on the outside there. A big giant fireplace on the inside here with a, um, attached to the smoke, to the, to the chimney, a big fireplace that you can cook chickens and you know, maybe a brick oven or something like that. That building there, I want to tear down. It's too far gone, but the brick one on the far end is in excellent condition. That one's got a new roof on it, but our mini bike tracks out there. These are all the pallets I have for the um, the courtyard area that we're going to put a uh, outdoor patio on on the, the back side of the first floor. So, I'll give you a quick walkthrough. Again, this is the, the lower lower level. Um, what's up, Steve? Back up to the first floor, ground level. This one's we've done a ridiculous amount of work on here. Um, the walls are parged over with a really cool process. There's actually black sand, gold mica, and seashells in there. And on this side, in some of them, we put oyster shells in the mixture, which was gave it a really cool effect kind of um a kind of uh then we expose the brick in the, the wood mantles this incredible architecture these middle columns here have been sanded down and two coats of danish oil and two coats of polyurethane so they look beautiful they just shine like a like a like a bar top um that's a harley davidson sign that was donated by the levesque family uh harry levesque and uh that's the American flag we drew into there. Actually uh, exposing the original brick. So um, I painted these black columns in here to kind of add some, some, uh, some contrast. And we painted those two columns, actual columns, black. It's, a, it's like a big art project, the whole, the whole thing, just like building a custom motorcycle. All, the, all of the metal work in the buildings we painted black with gold detailing on it. So this is a sign of local artist Beverly from Bellevue Creations. Here's our $375,000 sprinkler system, part of it anyway. So we figured if we're gonna pay almost a half a million dollars for a sprinkler system, might as well make it beautiful. So we did it like we would a custom motorcycle and did just that, we made it beautiful. Right, Moses? Moses. Moses, what do you think? This is great. This is uh, what you, we, we're dreaming for. We said we're going to raise uh, Rockville. And Rockville, we, we, are, we are doing that. We are in the process of raising Rockville. And, uh, Rockville has risen. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. It has risen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. A lot of prayers got into this, huh, huh brother? Oh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Let's take a we walk. We need more. We still need more prayers. Let's take a walk down here. Show them what's up over here. So what do we do over here, Moses? Uh, this is the longest bar Let's in Rockville. And uh, I'll tell you, if, if this bar... If we start to operate, it will be the best bar in Connecticut and United States. Absolutely, the man. The longest. The 
going to have our own micro. I mean, we're going to brew our own beer. And, uh, Moses, can you turn the signs on? It's going to be fantastic. They're over here. That's the uh, Buell Da Vinci. There's our, our uh, restored snap on lift. This thing is beautiful. It's a little dusty right now, but Moses just plugged in the. Uh, there's our Buell American Motorcycles in Moto Town, USA. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I wanted to bring you guys in here and show you something. Um, this is the courtyard. This is Christie's courtyard. I was going to put a roof over this, but she won't let me. <laughs> she thinks it looks beautiful the way it is. So all those pavers we got for out back, we restored this abandoned shell of a, a building, restored the walls, and that circle was actually one floor higher, and we, we, it was decaying, so we bought it down. To there and we're, we're almost done rebuilding that wall so one small section on the back there and uh this is a 2000 gallon water cistern that we're going to have a waterfall coming down here right to here but this is, this is going to be all pavers in here interlocking concrete pavers like the driveway at the compound so that's going to be pretty cool how do you turn that one on moses yeah. i've seen that one on before is it hooked to this? No. So Moses and I can't figure out how to turn this thing on. Steve, how do you turn, how do you turn the damn sign on? Switch. Oh. Switch. I guess we feel a little stupid now, don't we? Okay, make us look bad. That looks awesome. Oh, can you turn that one on too? Yeah. This 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 is we call this a Harley room. Remember you saw the video where I told you we, we did the floors in here? And, uh, man, I was so bummed because we, uh, ooh, look at that, huh? It came out gray instead of black, so I talked to CTI, and they're going to hook us up. They're shipping us 19 more gallons of the black, onyx black. It's supposed to be black, not, not gray. So they're going to give us onyx black for in here. This is, the, uh, this is Christy's uh, lounge area up here. There's an acid cigar. There's a story behind this one. Chrissy and I could tell you. This is a, from the TSI Harley Davidson that was donated by the Harley Davidson dealership owned by Harry Levesque. This is my repo. This is my repo monster truck set up for running over the bad guy and. Uh, bashing in doors. I'm kind of looking forward to the first time I get to drive that through a garage door. Stay tuned. That may come to pass. This thing's set up. 6.8 liter Triton V10. Oh yeah. 35s. And it's hooked up to haul bikes, of course. Big dog dually. So yeah, we did a frame up on, off this truck. It's a 2002 V10. I'm going to do a video on that before too long. Give you guys a rundown on that, so st stay tuned. But this is the Harley room painted everything black and orange in here. Uh, everything was painted black and orange, even the sprinkler system, uh, elbows and stuff. So, it's just a beautiful... This is where the bar is going. And, and this came from a bank right here. This is a... Uh, 1800s bank relic that just happened to fit perfectly in there. Believe it or not, these, these finials on here are copper. Copper finials. Very cool. A lot of detail work in here that you have to look to see, but it's everywhere in the entire building. Four football field long rooms. What do you got over here, Moses? Cool your pipes. Um. I have a picture of the beautiful celebrity with Holly Davidson. Very nice. So beautiful. Yeah, she's uh, also in these photos over here too, right? Sprinkler riser room. We made this this uh this is a on 
it's a gurney for hauling motorcycles around so you can put all the parts underneath it but here's the rest of our sprinkler room sprinkler riser room serious serious investment in sprinklers to make this old wood building fit for a motorcycle museum Bunch of Triumph memorabilia. Thank you for the tour down here, Moses. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless America. You know what? Let's take the elevator up. That's what we'll do. This is a stair tower in the back here. Concrete spiral staircase. Someday I'll show you guys that. But stay tuned. Let me take you on an elevator ride in the world's coolest antique elevator. This, this elevator is for freight only. The hauling motorcycles up and down. It goes up four stories to the top there. We actually painted the roof of it gold. I have no idea how much it costs to restore this elevator. But the masonry work alone, we had, we had masons in here for um, an entire winter. Rebuilding the stair, the, the elevator tower. And everything's been, all the cabling's new. Everything's been redone on it. Goodbye, first floor. So you had the lower level in the first floor. And we're coming up to the second floor. Which is actually closed right now and probably locked. So we'll go up to the third floor. Really smooth elevator, it rides beautifully. Door is closed, but I'll open it up, show you where we are. Ta da! We're on the third floor. And this is a another football field long room of classic motorcycles. Just beautiful bikes in here. We got the CZ, the TM100. Look at this thing. My heart stops a beat looking at that one. The Carabella. We'll never see another one of those. Carabella 200. Carabella Caliente. Suzuki GT380. A nice water buffalo. Uh, Yamaha YZ490, the KX125, the Mako, the Penton, the Penton 6 Day, the Suzuki 185, the Yamaha RD400, the 250, the 175, the Bonville, and then of course Jeff Stanton replica, Ricky Carmichael replica, and Doug Henry's actual CR250 that's Ricky's right there actually this one's Henry's you know the, the title to him that's a wall of champions Doug Henry signed that along with Jimmy Ellis and John Dowd and Jojo Keller and uh, 60 other guys who cross the bridge that's our haunted Halloween walk over there that's the Rockville uh, you can see we already started decorating for Halloween here we got all these, that big skull there, and uh, we got a huge haunted Halloween display up there. What's up, boys? We're doing a museum update here. What are you guys doing? Going down to detail? Yeah, the detail shop's on the far end. There's our little mini Jeep. Oh, Eric, you want to go What's going on, Cody? What's up, man? We're going to shoot some videos for this new uh, vapor honing cabinet. See if we can get that out there. Oh, let's do it, man. Yeah. You what are you up to, Junior? Getting going to pick up a CB125 and uh, doing some uh, paperwork. The fans are what's going on, man, with your, your your 500 when they saw you switch to the dark side here for Team Kawasaki, I'll Team Green. What, I'll tell you what, we had the choice between a brand new YZ250 and a brand new KX500. And, uh, I mean, I think it's clear what decision was made. Yeah, the YZ got the boot, huh? That's after that's after some serious testing at the WIC. The 500 just got deal. serious horsepower. Serious right? horsepower. And uh, I think this is actually lighter than the one. It, it, it lighter? Yeah, it's, uh, did you read the article uh, in the, read the magazine? Article. At least lighter it, than the 250. It, yeah. This is what this is. Lighter. It's 212 oh, pounds. It's 220 pounds. 220? 
it, it's it's lighter than a new a new 250 four stroke. But I, I'm still sold on the Honda. I just like the CRs. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Something with the bar, the seat position. The corner's like a dream, but when we're talking about the high-speed stuff, the long sweeping corners, it really depends on the track with this KX, man. I'm telling you, don't sleep on the KX. Don't sleep on it. And then we got the, the uh, Goldilocks and the three Dinos over here. My DXT, 100 horsepower, 115 horsepower, and 125 horsepower, 117. Fast, faster, and fastest. So back to the museum. This is where our personal toys are in here, but um, this is where we work. Here's a blueprint of the museum building showing all three floors and uh, the bridge that we're about to cross going over into there. For you guys who can't come check it out, here's a cool artist rendition. Here's an 1814 photo when it still had the cupola on top and the smokestack was burning. That was back before there were concrete roads and, and asphalt roads. So, as we cross the bridge here, you'll see there's a water uh, key right there, uh, like a um, keyhole. That's where the water used to go through, because it, it was all powered by water. This the mill was invented 100 years before the motorcycle, 100 years before the automobile, and 100 years before electricity. So there was no electricity, no cars, no cell phones, no internet, no none of that stuff. Just, you went home, it was a simpler time, you went home, at night and you came to work during the day and they kept it simple back then so that's that's the third floor um we'll go we'll go check out the second floor before we go to the fourth floor i already showed you the first floor where the bar is here's this stair tower local man's goal of graffiti and trash free rock rockville that's me love of motorcycles drives rockville revival effort we're rejuvenating the economy here and here's one. I mean, we first started eight years ago and had short hair and was 250 pounds, but I benched 405 back then, so I was a little bit stronger. Uh, museum picks up speed. I'm skinnier now. I have long hair. I've cut my hair in a few years, but definitely stronger then. There's me with my hat on and uh, some more newspaper articles. And this is when the mill went bankrupt in 1954. So and it was for rent and then sold. Um, and here's when I first bought the place. Businessman sees a bright future for rundown textile site. Anyways, this is the second floor. This is the foyer. There's some newspaper articles, mad about motorcycles on the front page. We're on the front page of the Connecticut Magazine. Um, got a letter from President Teddy Roosevelt thanking the mill for making his suit here, the fourth president, to do that and a whole b bunch of awards from the state uh, senate and uh, the mayor. We got backing from the mayor and the, the, the state senate and the uh, um, chamber of commerce have all given us awards two years in a row and one from the chief. This citation from the chief did not accompany a court date, so that was great. That was a great day with the chief for uh, 2,000 hours of community service we did. And I got a citizen award. So just all kinds of cool stuff. Local man's goal of graffiti and trash free rock. Well, I don't want to bore you guys, but uh, I, we did assemble an army of volunteers to clean up our city. And um, that's what we did. So, and we invested a massive amount of money in Rockville. There's a restoration shop down there. You, I'm sure you guys want to see that at some point. So there's one of the Hondas we restored. Done more Hondas than anything else. Here's the second floor. Uh, this is, um, that's Dane from Murder Cycles Bike. That's Hollywood, the president of Murder Cycles Bike. And that's his Hollywood's bike too. And that's a local benefactor, Fred Frost. That's his XLCR. And uh, we are an AMCA um, ambassador site. So we uh, have AMCA shows here. And um, here's some more floor plans of the museum architectural renditions of the bar that we're building downstairs and all our number one plaques is our love me wall we won 26 new england championships racing supercross uh, four in supercross and 22 in motocross uh juniors black belt in martial arts kempo and through here just rows and rows of beautiful bikes 
rows and rows. This is second floor. And just keep on going. This is where all the street bikes are. It's a 57 Indian Royal Enfield. So. So that's the second floor. You've seen the bar on the first floor. Then you go up the stair tower here. And you've got your third floor, which I just walked you guys through. Football field long, we're on the 10 yard line. Then you go up to the fourth floor, which is yet and maybe someday my grandmother used to collect elephants she said the trunk up is good luck so if you see elephants all over the museum with the trunk up you can thank my nana for that best lady ever lived here's the fourth floor and you can see this is a um has a cathedral ceiling in here because it's well the fourth floor and these are all bikes that were going to be worked on at some point here's our rock stock um, banner for next year. We had Doug Danger jump a bus. Hopefully have him back next year. Uh, Rockstock had 12 bands over three days and thousands of people showed up. Got some furniture stored for the first floor once it's open. And some of bikes, my friend's bikes that I'm going to be restoring. And uh, some old Elsinore. Some YZs. And then you come through here and you can see the lifts that we have the first floor snap-on lifts that we restored there's another one right here so and look at that look at this beam work in here that's the only portion we were able to salvage the rest of it was all rotted so all the wood's brand new in here because um the roof was failed for 60 years and over here you got to see this here's the brew fest sign we have a brew fest here every year like 50 microbreweries these spots on the floor are where someone's feet were for uh well 150 years because the mills were on each side so some person stand right there and some person stand right here until they wore holes in the floor can you imagine that crazy isn't it the boltaco some boltaco engines these windows these are the original leaded windows i don't know if you have the camera will pick it up but you can see the glass is wavy you see that how it distorts things that's how you know it's leaded glass. It's original 205-year-old uh, windows. So and when you come over here, you see the floor changes. This is an 1880 edition. And uh, this is where we, we stage all our artwork. Here's an actual um, picture of the mill that the town gave us. That's going on the first floor when it's done. Then we got the Daytona Speedway. And we got all kinds of artwork hanging up in here that we've collected. This is where we stage the artwork. We just hang it up up here. In the storage area and then once we find a spot for it or if we have a spot we you know these are all harley vintage harley um memorabilia and some evil knievel stuff so we just stage it all in here this is a really cool piece this is one of my favorites it's a it's a cut engine cut out piece and it's just artwork everywhere so we stage it up here and then bring it downstairs when it's ready for prime time here's part of our trophy collection if you have any trophies don't throw them out if you're moving or whatever or our motorcycle magazines and books or motorcycle toys or uh vintage motorcycle stuff like jackets or colors or anything like that or tools or signs um that's where all this stuff comes from here's our christmas tree so we, christmas isn't too far away we made it out of motorcycle mufflers how cool is that That'll be fully decorated. And then we've got all kinds of just everywhere you, you're looking on this floor. There's motorcycle memorabilia and these glass cases and signs and banners and stuff we've been collecting. But this floor, a lot of people really like this floor because of the cathedral ceiling on it. It has a really cool effect. So someday we'll have this finished too, God willing. Here's a vintage Harley-Davidson sign. Uh, 
that we have to have a box made for it by our friend Greg at the Sign Connection. Harley Davidson. These are kind of fragile. You got to be gentle with them. But um, the sign's probably 30 years old. You know, some more uh, motorcycle lifts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Totally restored, painted with automotive quality paint. And then nine and ten. These are just dusty up here. They've been up here for well a long time. Wash me. Just getting ready. It's taking us forever to finish the first floor. We will get there eventually. So it just takes a long time. This is the elevator. When you open the door and you ring, you hit the bell and the bell goes off. That means the door down there is not closed. So. Steve. Hey, if you guys like this type of video where I show you around what's going on, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to share with you our progress and updates. This stair tower, we just got done repointing this. That means repointing means filling the in between the bricks with new mortar wherever we needed it. And uh, it's been power washed twice and repointed and then sealed with a sealant to uh, seal it to protect the bricks from degradation here. Um, Brand new heaters, would you believe that there's 16 of these electric heaters on all four stair towers? There's a north, south, east, and west stair tower, right? So um, there's gotta be a north, south, east, and west sprinkler, and every stair tower has a sprinkler, right? So there's four heaters in each sprinkler. We have to keep these at 50 degrees or an alarm will go off. So our heating bill is for the complex between the, the four buildings is upwards of $9,000. $9,000 a month. It's crazy. But uh, obviously a labor of love. We've invested on average a million dollars a year. We've got about seven and a quarter million dollars invested in the project. Um, this stair tower has just been completely rebuilt from top to bottom. It's no small task. New doors everywhere. And in the back alleyway here, you can see it's got a brand new uh this last new year's eve when it was seven degrees out i was cutting the pipes off the back of this building on new year's day with ethan howard while you guys are all home warm with your families not to make you feel guilty or anything but i was here and that's what i do i'm here working constantly uh because i can't complete this project in my lifetime or maybe i could if i got some help some financial support we probably could expedite it but there's this this building i just walked you through is forty-five thousand square feet We've done 65,000 square feet. There's another 100,000 square foot of buildings uh, in the complex that need to be done, including these over here. But this main building's done, and uh, we're just finished doing the finishing touches. We just did the back wall here this summer. Uh, that's all repointed and then washed and then sealed with a sealant. So this brick is 205 years old, but it looks new. So back into the first floor. And uh, so you've been through the first floor with me. In the Harley room on the far end, you saw the courtyard, the front stair tower, the uh, bar room area here on the first floor. You saw the second floor, some of the third floor, and some of the fourth floor. And we took a walk across the bridge over to the showroom. You have not seen the restoration shop on the lower level or the detail shop on the far end. Back down on the first floor or lower level. Man, they just don't make buildings like this anymore with this kind of stonework. That's just true craftsmanship right there. And make big, massive beams. Made out of, I mean, think about it. This was made, well, 205 years ago, so they didn't have prefabricated stuff. Everything was handmade, you know, stones, and they were just getting into concrete. So here, we, here we go, back up to the Honda. Well, thank you all for watching, if you've stayed with me this far. Stay tuned.